Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So today I'm working on getting some of our flower rose staked and corralled. Now, ideally, I would have been pounding stakes in the ground a couple of weeks ago, but the reality is that it's been a busy couple of weeks here at Two Sisters Flower Farm, and so like a lot of projects that we do here, we're just getting to it now, and it's all right. We're just gonna roll with it. Today I'm gonna focus on getting our snapdragons and our lisianthus staked because those are probably the two most important flowers to focus on right now. They just grow so tall and slender that I know that if we were to have a large rainstorm, it's very likely that they could topple over. You know, we've had some dry weather, so other than a little bit of wind, they really haven't had to battle the elements too much. And so for the most part, they're standing upright and they're looking just fine. I do have a few snapdragon stems that are just a little bit wonky right now, but considering that I planted, I don't know, five or six hundred snapdragon plants this year, you know, it will be fine. It will all work out. So I like using this EMT conduit for everything that we stake except for the dahlias. For the dahlias, I do prefer to use T-posts because the plants are just a little bit more robust. I think that they could benefit from a more sturdy post. Now, originally I invested in EMT conduit because a couple years ago it was really cheap and now the price of conduit, like everything else these days, it has skyrocketed. Honestly, I think at the moment that it might be more cost effective to just buy the T-posts, but because our annual rows are so close together, I really enjoy the conduit because it doesn't take up as much space. They're a lot easier to just to pound into the ground. I feel like with T-posts, a lot of the times that I need help. So I'm very glad that we invested in about 200 of these a couple years ago. Even now, I would love to have more, but I might just wait to see if the price will come down um, yet. Now, you'll see later in this video, but I do use Horta Nova netting for our Snapdragons and for our Lysianthus. I just find that it works easier. And then I prefer the corral method on our dahlias, you know, using Baylor twine and T-post to sort of keep the plants supported and contained. I will also corral our zinnias just because if I don't, they tend to spill over into the walkways. And the same goes for things like our cosmos and marigolds. I will corral them as well because the same thing happens. They just grow into such robust and large plants. And if they're not supported, they tend to spill into the walkways. And I'm really trying this year to keep the walkways clean because we are opening for a U pick on the farm. So my goal is just to have a really neat and tidy garden. Now the zinnias are a little small. I probably won't start with the baler twine just yet, but it's a job to get this entire quarter acre staked. So I will at least um, make sure that all my posts get into the ground. Okay, that's enough talking for now. Let's get started. Now, as you'll see in this clip, I space our EMT conduit about 10 to 12 foot apart, and I do place posts on either side of our three foot wide flower beds.
Now that all the posts are in the ground, it's time to stretch our Hordanova netting on top. The netting itself just rests on the post. It actually stays in place because it's stretched tautly between the posts. So we don't use anything else to secure it in place. We suspend our Hordanova netting about 12 inches above the ground. As our seedlings grow taller, they'll grow through the netting and what this does is it provides support to flowers should we get damaging weather. The goal is that this Hordanova netting will prevent any of our flowers from really toppling over in a wind or rainstorm. Remember, annuals especially, they're quick growing flowers. While they can grow into large plants, they often don't have a large root system to keep them upright. Support of some kind is the key to keep your flowers growing long, straight stems all season long. Now, while the netting works great, it's not the only way to keep your flowers supported. Another method I like to use within my flower bed is a technique called corralling. Now its purpose, it's similar in that it helps give added support to growing flowers, but instead of laying a netting horizontal to your growing plants, with corralling, you're gonna use some sort of twine to wrap around these same posts that we've already pounded in. You're gonna almost cage in your flowers. I like using the corral method when I have an entire bed of bulky plants like with my zinnias, my dahlias, and even my cosmos. By having this corral on the perimeter of my bed, it forces plants to grow upright and it prevents them from spilling over into the walkways. This first layer that I'm adding here, I'm going to keep it pretty close to the ground as the plants are still small. But as these plants grow, I will add additional layers of support. And by the end of the season, these rows, they may have two or three levels to their corral. So right now, while the plants are small, corralling, it doesn't have the biggest difference, but you can see a small difference between the row on my left, where I put that initial corral, and the row on the right that has currently no corralling. Um, the plants are just leaning more slightly towards the walkways, um, and if I were to let that go, they would naturally just kind of fall onto the walkway. And so we're really, again, trying to promote long, strong stems. Here is an example of what can happen when your flowers are not properly supported. So this is Apple of Peru. It is a fast growing plant. As you can see, I did place the metal post here, but I did not yet corral these guys. We had a small rainstorm here earlier this week, which you can see it did cause some of these plants to start leaning and toppling just a bit. While this by no means is a lot of damage, you can imagine just how much havoc the elements can have on a cutting garden when plants are sort of left to fend for themselves. Now, there's no right or wrong way to support your flowers. You could certainly use the Horta Nova netting in all your beds. I'm just sharing what I prefer to do and my preferences after trying multiple support methods, you know, these past few years. I encourage you to do the same, you know, really try out these different support methods to see which one works best for you. Okay guys, I think that about covers it. If you have questions I didn't answer in this video, don't be afraid to leave them in the comments below. Also, while you're down there, I'd really appreciate if you could give this video, you know, a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Now, I just want to say thank you so much for tuning in today, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Bye, guys.